may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, share, subscribe, like this video, make sure you put your prayer request in the bottom. There's plenty of news, more than I could even think about even trying to cover. There's so much coming out right now. Intel is, well, it don't look good for the world. It looks good for us, don't look good for the world. I was just checking out Lisa Boyce's new video, and she said something that's very truthful. God ain't going to force himself on anybody. That's just something the Lord won't do, even though we've... He's told us over and over and over that we're at the end. People still don't want to believe it, but he's not going to force himself. That's why they're not going to know up until the rapture. They're not going to have any warning. When the rapture does happen, it's going to be sudden, and they won't see it coming. He'll come as a thief to them. Now, to us, he won't, because we know he's coming. We know that we're there. We're definitely in Daniel 10 has already taken place. The Psalms 83 wars happening right now. It's being bolstered as we speak. The fall of the United States is any moment. It's coming. And we're starting to see signs of that already in the news from the intel that we're getting. Because if what they predict is true, and I do believe it's coming, that we'll disappear somewhere here, that gas prices will soar over $10 a gallon. That will crush the American economy. That will, that will end it permanently. Because the country's already so far in debt, there's no saving it, even though they, they're telling you it's going to be saved come November, which is a lie. It is not. There is no bringing it back. See, these people, like I said, they're wanting a man to save them. They're going to get a man. It's going to be the Antichrist. That's what they're going to get. We don't know who he is. Like I said, I don't really care, but that's who's coming on the scene to fix all these problems. And that's what people want. They want a man. They don't want Jesus, even the church. They want a man to fix it. That's who they seek out. Now, here we go. Let's get into this, because it's a lot. A missile strike was launched by Israel aircraft uh, that was outside the Iranian airspace. Report from inside the intelligence agency here that the United States claims Hezbollah Iran will simultaneously respond with rocket barrages and bombs in the coming days. So they're all going to strike at one time. Chances are, and of no way stop, an all-out war beginning this week. Iran's supreme leader has issued an order to Iran armed forces to militarily strike Israel directly, following the assistance of the, uh, I think it's the, uh, the execution they had last night in Tehran. Now, it gave the order to emergency meeting of Iran's Supreme National Security Council this morning. As of 4.48 p.m. today, Wednesday, I am told that former colleagues in the intelligent community of Israel is now contemplating preemptive action against Iran's probable retaliation. So Israel's planning to retaliate before it even gets there. And it makes sense. There, why wait for a bomb to come when you can hit them first? If Iran does, in fact, strike back at Israel, as it's expected to very uh, substantially and very much more serious than the last time, recall that there, uh, not too long ago, Israel bombed Iran's embassy uh, property in Damascus. Syria and Iran retaliated with a bunch of old drones and rockets. Now, I'm sure this intelligence is coming from how Turnbull I'm getting it off of uh, Telegram. Six nations and a billion dollars thwarted most of the attack, and several ballistic missiles did get through the military targets. This time, I'm being told it will very much be different. Iran is serious now. They've got a new leader, and he's trying to make a name for himself, so don't forget that. As soon as it's almost guaranteed that the amount of damage is to be inflicted upon Israel. Here's the thing. 
people need to read a Bible. And boy, they know the outcome of this already. It makes it a whole lot easier, don't it? As such, and they almost guarantee that the moment damage has been inflicted upon Israel as such, that Israel will declare war and two countries will go at it. That's not what the Bible says. Now what is, Iran and all of our proxies will move against Israel and God will put an end to it. That's us being raptured out of here, I do believe. Could be, or God will do it supernaturally and end them. But it, one of the other is coming. As a facilities, this is likely to be an excuse. Like I said, this is how Turner, you don't know nothing about scripture whatsoever. So you got to just bear with it. It is already well known that Israel has been looking for an excuse to openly destroy Iran's nuclear facilities. See, this guy is a big supporter of Iran. He loves Iran. UN Security of Defense uh, Austin said today, United Nations or United States will defend its Israel. If the U.S. gets involved with Iran's Israel situation, then it's already known. It says gasoline prices. I see the, this is where we was talking about the $10 a gallon. Everything in the country exactly. Electricity and natural gas uh, must move by trucks and fuel as they have uh, every product and every food. But the thing is, you're not going to see any of this, so there's nothing to worry about. All right. Israel is ready at this point for an all-out war. If the other side reacts in a way that is severely, uh, severely damages Israel, which I don't think is going to happen, according to messages that were sent through diplomatic channels in Lebanon and Tehran, breaking American intelligence is now saying within 72 hours of right now, this war will take place. And I'm starting to doubt that either. I think it may be, see what is today? I believe they'll go in this weekend. Could They could do it faster. They could do it sooner, but uh, I don't know. We'll wait and see. But they're saying 72 hours. Now, let's see. What else have we got here on tap since the world's in pure chaos? Uh, political. That stuff's not important anymore. That stuff's about to end. Let's see. What else we got here? It says, uh, here's one. Israel's offensive against Hezbollah will be massive. Iran and Hezbollah will continue to uh, coordinate their attacks on Israel. Like I said, good luck with that with God. You're going to need it. Let's see. Do, do, do. Iran's Supreme Leader, al has issued an order for Iran to strike Israel directly in a retaliation for the killing of Hamas's leader. <laughs> Avenging Hamas leaders, uh, Ismail, assassination in Tehran's duty because it occurred in Iran's capital during the coming days of lighting. That's got them scared because they know now there's nowhere to hide. The Mossad will get them. It's expected that 4,000 rockets will be launched daily. Like I said, this is where God's going to step in. This is where they're going to find out in this Psalms 83 war that the true God is the one that's protecting Israel. This is where they find out. This is Bible. They're all about to get the shock of their life. The whole world is. They're going to realize a lot of people that don't believe in God, they're about to. Mark it down. Iran believes it has no choice but to launch a major attack that will deter Israel from similar attacks in the future. The Iran axis of resistance is likely planning a coordinated strike against Israel. Like I said, God's about to shake the earth and scare a lot of people to death. We've told you it was coming. We warned you and warned you. That is what's coming. This is where God puts the hammer down, not only on the Middle East, but the whole world. And the whole world's going to hear it. That's what's coming, I promise you. That is what's on tap. All right. Now, Turkey is threatening to invade Israel. Still yet, Iran is threatening Israel. Iran's proxies are threatening Israel. Russia is siding with Iran against Israel. Nothing to see here. Nothing resembles Gog and Magog. But this is not Gog and Magog. Gog and Magog happens after we're gone. See, let's get see if we can find some more stuff in here. Okay, his command of the Iran forces, like I said, they talked about releasing 4,000 rockets a day. So we covered, they talked about 4,000 rockets, but they're saying 4,000 rockets a day and other intel. Three Iran officials confirmed the situation in the New York Times. The White House has been unable to independently verify the death on uh that uh, Ishmael last night, uh, Wednesday afternoon, but Tehran is placing the blame on Israel's defense forces. Israel has launched a strike on Beirut, Lebanon on Tuesday, but neither claimed responsibility nor denied killing him. 
The criminal, uh, yada, 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 this is, like I said, anti-Israel. Commander Officer of Israel's Air Force, uh, General Thomas Barr, issued an anonymous statement later on Wednesday promising that there is nowhere too far for Israel to strike if needed. Israel Air Force defends and operates all arenas of the war, enveloping the state of Israel with dozens of aircraft manned and unmanned. We act against anyone planning to harm our citizens. Now, what I'm looking at is that most of the weapons come through Damascus that are going to their proxies. This might be where Israel eliminates Damascus completely. It's very possible. And this is probably where they eliminate all their proxies. I don't know how they do it, but they've got EMP weapons themselves and they've got nuclear weapons. That's why I do believe our time here is limited and we won't be here much longer. We're going to disappear. That's why God has been warning everybody with everything that's happening, what's coming. Netanyahu addressed the nation. Israel has struck crushing blows against Iran's access of evil, taking out top terror commanders. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu addressed the nation on television Tuesday or Wednesday night in a dramatic presentation. He said that he is keeping the vow that made him the joint session of the U.S. Congress last week. Israel will strike crushing blows against the Iran regime and its access of evil, namely Hamas and Gaza, Hezbollah, and Lebanon, and the Houthis in Yemen. Netanyahu, Netanyahu probably and defiantly declared that in recent days and hours, Israel's military force has successfully attacked and killed three of the most evil, most deadly, most dangerous terrorists in the world. Netanyahu said that Israel will not bow to those around the world, demanding Jewish state surrender to the forces of evil, and that's exactly what the world is telling them to do. Rather, he promised that Israel will continue to fight, and win until victory is achieved. Whoever butchers our children, he said, will pay the price. The following is the text of the Prime Minister's remarks. Prime Minister Benjamin Yahu this evening, Wednesday 31st, at uh, Kirya and Tel Aviv, translated from Hebrew. Dear citizens of Israel, good evening. Since the beginning of the war, I have made it clear that we are, fight, we are in a fight against Iran's access of evil. This is an existential war against the stronghold of terrorist armies, which is Daniel 10. Daniel 10 tells you, through this, that's when World War III breaks out. Iran is one that really pulls all this together and causes World War III and makes it break out severely around the world. So three weeks ago, we attacked the Hamas chief of staff, Mohammed Def. Two weeks ago, we attacked the Houthis in one of the Air Force's most distant assaults. And yesterday, we attacked Hezbollah chief of staff, a.k.a. Monson. <laughs> On behalf of the citizens of Israel, I would like to express deep appreciation to the IDF, ISA, the IDF Intelligence, and the Air Force, and all security services for the precision operations on different fronts. In the attack yesterday, we eliminated Nazarelli's deputy, Mushan, who uh, directly responsible for the massacre of dear boys and girls of the Shams location. That's where them little kids got killed. He was responsible for the murder of many other Israel civilians, he was also responsible for increasing assault against the citizens of the northern communities over nine months of war. He was one of the most wanted terrorists in the world. The U.S. put a $5 million bounty on his head, and for good reason. He was involved in the murder of 241 American soldiers and 58 French soldiers in Beirut in 1983. He was the main liaison between Iran and Hezbollah, and he was responsible for the organization's missiles. Several days ago, during the visit to the site, in a terrible massacre there at Shams, I saw the deep mourning of the families who uh, whose world was destroyed around them. I told our Druist brothers and sisters, we are brothers, they are, uh, there is a covenant of life between us, uh, has been more even deeper than the last few days of this uh, terrible stuff that happened that morning. The murder of innocent children has been added to the unending suffering of the residents of the North. Our dear ones have been exiled from their homes and whose communities have suffered serious attacks. And for those, we will not be silent. We have settled accounts with the uh, Moshin, like and we will, uh, with, we will with all those who attack us. Whoever butchers our children and whoever murders our citizens, whoever attacks our state will pay the price. Citizens of Israel, challenging days are before us. Since the attack of Beirut, we have heard threats from all sides. We have prepared for any scenario, and we will stand united and determined against this threat. Israel will exact a very heavy price for the aggression against us from whatever quarter. So, that's nuclear. 
For months, there has been no week in which there have not told us at home and abroad to end this war. This is the world telling them this, including the United States, that's tried to sabotage this from the beginning. End of the war, because we have exhausted that what we can achieve is an impossible win in any case. If we gave in to pressure, we would not have eliminated the senior Hamas leaders and thousands of other terrorists. So basically, they're going to go through with everything they say they're going to go through. If Iran and Hezbollah do hit them, they're going to put them out of commission permanently. You know, and I, Iran and them knows that. And Israel does know that they have an EMP weapon, and I think they might try to put, use theirs before. If the, if the intelligence is correct and they say that they're going to hit them before they retaliate, they could use the EMP weapons, and that's going to open Pandora's box. That's why we tell you we don't have long here to get as many people on that boat as possible. Listen, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we're, we're in the last hours now. You know, you can go by scripture. It's all there. Go into Daniel, read through it. Go into Amos. It's all there. Isaiah 17, all there. You're seeing scripture for the first time. This has never happened before. Not like this. People can say, well, that's all right. No, it has not. This is all new. This is scripture, word for word. It's different. People can, you know, like I said, they'll deny it to the last minute. You'll never convince those people. They'll find out when that day when the earthquakes hit the earth and everything. Then, Even then, they'll probably deny it. But you, you'll never convince them. We see them come to the comments section every day. These are people that will deny it to the very end until it's too late. There's nothing you can do about them. If you're on the boat, just be ready to go home. It's a good time for us. The world, if they want to stay here, they can stay here. But we're going home. Okay? That's the good news. The people that don't want the rapture to happen and they come up with their excuse, they can stay here. But you that are ready, that are watching for Jesus and want to be with Jesus, he's coming to get you. And you don't have to do this much longer. Can I get an amen? But we are going home. This marks the end. This is prophecy. Jesus told us what to look for in the end. We're seeing it for the first time. Before, we was kind of guessing and going by a lot of different things. Now we're seeing scripture. It's different now. Now we're in the truth. We're seeing scripture completely. This is Daniel 10. Iran's already pulling all the proxies in. This is Psalms 83. This is where all the Confederates will move against Israel. It's all there, people. It's all there. Now we just wait to leave. That is what's coming next. But this world as you know it is about to end. So like I said, get as many people on the boat as possible because we're going home. I, love, I want to say, first of all, I want to bring this up. Trust the gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Jesus died on the cross for our sins, past, present, future. He died, was buried, rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. Trust in Jesus. Keep your eyes on him. Do not take your eyes off of him. He is the only way. Only through the blood of Jesus are you getting in. Okay, that's it. So only through him. Don't anybody else tell you it's any other way. It's only through Jesus. Because we are down to the last hours here. I can say that confidently because I know scripture. And this scripture is coming to life like I've never seen in the last, what, 12 hours? Last 12 hours, everything. We knew we had the warnings. But now we're seeing it unfold completely in Daniel 10. A lot of stuff from uh, Amos and different places. They're all coming apart now. Isaiah. So these are all scriptures. Just like Jesus said in the last day. And Paul said, you'll know. If you know that scripture, you'll know. Don't even have to write to me. You'll know. So we know. Because now we see scripture. And Jesus said specifically for these times right now. When you see these things start. And that's what we've seen in the last 12 hours start. Biblically, word for word, what's happening in Daniel 10 and on. Look up. Does not mean to wait for a special day sometime next month or this month to get. That's not what it says. Now, people today, they're going to tell you it has to be at this time, this time. The point in time is the time of the rapture. Whenever God decides, it's going to be the point in time of him. We're not God. He is. But people down here think they're God and they can set the days. That's not the way this goes. The rapture is when he says it. If it's going to be... Tomorrow at 4 o'clock, that's when it will be. does not have to be on a certain day. That's not what it says. The point of day is the day he sets, not we set. Okay? Right now, you need to be looking up, waiting for that trumpet, because that's what's coming. Because now we're seeing scripture word for word. 
and the word doesn't lie. Like I said, you don't have to take my word for it. We've told you over and over, and we've had every single day, hundreds of people. They've asked Jesus, are we in the last moments? He's given them that. All you got to do is ask him. That's all you got to do. Ask Jesus, and he's going to show you. But if you're on the fence, make sure you get off that fence as soon as possible. We don't want to see anybody left here. We have people say, well, you know, if I get left here, I'm like, no. If you get left here, you're going to die, <laughs> you know. You know, these people, they, are, they act all brave. They ain't seen nothing. I'm serious. When I hear somebody say that, I know they don't know Scripture. They've never opened the Bible in their lives. Because if they did, they had no revelation and nobody would want to be here. I'm sorry. That's the goofiest thing to ever say to anybody. Because when you say that to me, I'm like, yeah, you don't know Scripture. Because nobody wants to be here. And if they do... I mean, literally, if if you truly understand what's coming to this world before the ones left behind, you wouldn't want to be here. And, you know, just like I believe that when this day comes, everybody's going to wish they had this time back. Everybody. The whole world is going to wish they had this day back before all this hell happens. Because they're not going to want to be here. And it's not going to take long to figure out they don't want to be here. There's no going to McDonald's and going to Walmart and get you some food. Half the people today won't even know how to cook a meal. You know, and I'm telling you, it's not going to be easy. Life will not be easy once we leave. It is going to be hell on earth. Seven worst years in the history of this planet, and it's had some bad history. And it's not even compared to the seven years coming. If that don't scare you, you got an issue. Because I'm telling you, you should be scared out of your mind being left here in that. There are six, I think six months, I think, that these creatures come out of hell and they will sting you for six months and you can't die. That's no fairy tale. That's not something that just sounds like that. No, these creatures are real and they will come out of the pits of hell and they will be on this earth and they're going to torture mankind for six months, I do believe, and just sting them and you can't die from it. You're talking about pure hell on earth. You ain't seen nothing yet. You see, these people believe that that's a fairy tale. It doesn't mean that literally. The Bible is literally. And revelation is literally going to happen upon this earth. But people's going to find that out the hard way, unfortunately, because they just won't listen. But luckily, you guys have. And you're on the boat, and you're ready to go home. So try to get as many people on that boat as possible before we get out of here, because... We're in the last moments. That's just the truth. Thank you for all the emails and all the uh, the confirmations today, for all the, you know, everything you all have given us because we've gotten so many. That's how we're so confident of where we are because we know so many people, so many confirmations that this is the end. And we see it playing out now from Scripture. So this is, as Lisa said, this is a good time, people. Get excited. We're going home. We're not going to be here much longer. I love each and every one of you. If I don't see or hear from you again, I'll see you in heaven. Thank you once again for tuning in to Global Rapture Watchers, where we do daily updates here on YouTube. Letting you know that we're one day closer to our Lord and Savior coming back. Thank you for all the support for this channel. This channel was created for God's sheep. Those that are waiting for their Lord and Savior to come back and get us in these last days. We do updates once to two times a day here on YouTube. Thank you for all your support for the channel. God bless each and every one of you.